Now before I kick off with this aiming tutorial, I thought I'd give you a quick rundown of my mouse setups and my thought process of why I use these mouse settings, etc. So as you can see, my hand is in the middle of the mat here. And from here to the side of my mat, I can do a nice sweeping 180. And you know, this gives me the ability to react to people that come up behind me and do very sneaky plays. And also a whole swipe of my mouse mat, 49 centimeters here. You know, I do a 360. Now this gives me like a really nice comfort zone where it's slow enough that I can get really good sniper shots or shock rifle shots at long range and keep a nice steady mouse, but also fast enough that as you can see here, I can turn around and react to the enemy if I am caught off guard. Now in this next clip, I'm actually demonstrating a lower sensitivity. You can see how much longer it takes me to react to the enemy. But a low sensitivity will improve your sniper aim, your shock rifle, your tracking on your mini gun and your link gun. It generally does help out your hit scan a lot. Um, but you will suffer in the close combat department. Now, if you go the other side of the spectrum, which is increase your sensitivity, you're going to be incredibly useful in close combat situations. But your hit scan, uh, your shock rifle, your sniper rifle will suffer tremendously because you won't be able to hold your mouse as steady as this footage will now show you. Now, if you're watching the crosshair, you can see how twitchy it is and how the littlest movements on my mouse might really do affect it. And you've got to be very careful. And this is why I use a balance of both. So I try and have that sort of mid ground that I can use my hit scan, my snipers, and also my rockets and my projectiles. So my final thought on the whole mouse sensitivity issue is that you've got to use what you feel most comfortable with. If you feel it's too slow, turn it up. If you feel it's too fast, turn it down and find your middle ground, essentially. It doesn't matter if it's really high or really low for you, just find your comfort zone. And you know, if you're gonna change sensitivity, guys, don't give it five minutes, give it you know, a week or two, get used to it and you'll notice improvements. So now onto the actual aiming tutorial. And first up, we're gonna learn lazy aim. Uh, pretty much everybody instinctively sort of does this by nature, I feel. And this is just let the enemy walk into your crosshair. Use your enemy's movement against them, essentially. Let them do the work of going into your crosshair. That's how easy this is. You hold it just dead center. You don't need to touch anything, just fire at the right moment. Next up is keyboard aiming. This is combining the lazy aim with your directional keys, really keeping your mouse steady as possible. If you look into the top right corner where my mouse is, you'll notice it won't hardly move at all. But basically we wanna keep up with the enemy's momentum a little bit better and keep up our dodge movement as well because if we're just standing still, we're just gonna get hit in the face all the time. Here's another clip of just using the lazy aim and the keyboard aim together, not using the mouse whatsoever and you can see how potent it is at the medium and long range distances. Next, we're gonna add in some mouse flick into our aim and we tend to flick our mouse quite a bit in Unreal Tournament when people are doing the dodge animation. Now, the dodge animation is common occurrence. You use it to get across the map quicker. You also use it in those combat situations. But if you've pulled out a sniper rifle or a shock rifle, people often will not use the dodge animation or a jump animation because it's so much easier to hit. It seems counterintuitive because you think it's a dodge, right? But if you dodge against sniper rifles or shock rifles against any average player, they will be able to predict your exact movement and be able to flick accordingly to you. Now in this slowed down footage, what I'm waiting for is that dodge movement. But often what players will do to avoid getting hit by a sniper rifle is do a little bit of strafing spam. So here's an example of Pixel Twitch trying to strafe out one of my shots. Now as I hit Pixel Twitch with the first shot, he's being knocked back and he's thinking I'm low health and the next hit will kill me. Instinctively, he wants to get into cover, either pillar left here or the right pillar. Now, the quickest way into cover is to use the dodge movement here, but he knows that this will telegraph his movement and it'll be very predictable and easy to hit, and I'm gonna be ready to flick towards him. So what Pixel Twitch tries to do here before he uses his dodge is that he tries to bait out a shot, but I'm just gonna be incredibly patient and just wait for the shot that I wanna take, and if he dodges, then I'm able and ready for it. So when it comes to shooting our opponents, we have kind of two different ways of aiming. So we want to use the lazy aim and the keyboard aim when somebody is left, right spamming with their strafe keys. As you can see here, I'm just waiting for that opportunity to hit him 
as he meets my crosshair. Of course, I want to keep my movement up, so I'm going to use the keyboard aim along with the lazy aim and wait for the right moments to shoot him. Now, when it comes to hitting the dodge movement, it is more mouse flicks, more mouse tracking, um, and that takes a while to build up that muscle memory down. But what I recommend that you do to learn all these sort of mechanics for hit scan weapons is play Instagip. It teaches you how to hit those annoying little strafe movements that I've been talking about. And also it teaches you the patience to wait for those dodge mechanics. As you can see in this footage now, I'm trying to use my arrow keys to hit, but I can't hit the shot. But now I know he's in a position where he'll dodge out, making him very obvious to hit. And again, at the long range, I'm using more arrow keys in a close range environment or whenever he makes a big move, such as a dodge, I'm going to flick and aim that way. Not only is the instigib going to help improve your sniper rifle, your shock rifle aim, it's going to also improve your dodge movement against those weapons as well. You're going to understand what to do in those certain situations and, you know, it's going to just basically help your general game a lot more. Now, once you're comfortable with your gaming sense and all these sort of aiming techniques, you kind of all mold them instinctively into one thing. As you can see here, I'm dodging and aiming. I'm using my keyboard aim with dodge movement mechanics there to sort of line up my aim. I'm also doing slight alterations with my mouse on the keyboard aim as well. So they kind of all join in together and they build up great core mechanics for Unreal Tournament aiming. Now, once you've improved those skills dramatically, you're going to notice that it's going to improve your comboing aim as well, because essentially it's the same fundamental skills, just with a smaller target, essentially. And you're going to improve your aim dramatically. You're going to be able to use combos while dodging, while moving across the map. And that's exactly what you want. Just learning these simple basics will improve your whole game. So I hope you've enjoyed this basic tutorial on Hitscan. I've got more lessons lined up in the future and the next one is actually working on your projectile aim, working on your rockets, your flak, and it's going to be another basic tutorial. But basically I plan to do all the basics, then work up to the intermediate and then the advanced and then the pro level stuff on these tutorials. So if you want more of that content, feel free to subscribe and any other sort of Unreal Tournament content, I'm going to be doing lots of that on this channel. And I really appreciate all the comments and the feedback, both positive and negative. I'd like to hear it all, so just whack it in the comments section below. And if you're wondering what this game is, it's Unreal Tournament and it's a pre-alpha. So it doesn't look great at the moment, uh, but in the future, trust me, it's going to look fantastic in terms of the artwork. And the gameplay is really coming together now, but it is a pre-alpha. So if you're going to try it, feel free to go on the Unreal Tournament uh, forums, sign up there play it um but you know don't judge it too harshly because it is a pre-alpha still um but anyways guys thanks for tuning in and catch you next time